Hey, everybody, this is Dan with Pain Free You. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Alex from Seattle. And uh, Alex has hit me up and volunteered to do a success story based on his journey through chronic symptoms or pains or whatever he experienced. Um, he and I have not spoken about this before, so I don't really know the, uh, the full background on it. So we're going to see how this goes. Alex, thank you, man. I really appreciate you being willing to share your story. Hopefully it'll inspire some people. And um, why don't you introduce yourself and kind of tell me tell me where you've been, what what you've done in the medical world, what you've done in the mind body world, you know, when things kind of turned around for you and how you're doing now, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Dan. Hello. Uh, in case you're wondering if Dan really is an angel, I rescheduled on him about four times for doing <laughs> this, effectively wasting about four of his hours uh but he was still willing and happy to hear it so oh, man. all good <laughs> so yeah about three years back uh i woke up one morning and my back really hurt surprise surprise um and what followed was about two years of being absolutely bedridden and having um, all the activities I enjoyed taken away and being unable to work or be an effective human being. And initially when I woke up, uh, I had just been, all I was doing the day before was swimming, which I was a, uh, I was a swimmer all my life. So that should have been no biggie. Um okay. And it started out not so bad, just a little twinge in the lower back on the left side. And then I, well, just over the course of two years, as I started doing more and more, instead of getting better and better, it got worse and worse. Um, and then I retroactively i can see that it was the same thing was tied to a, a myriad of other symptoms like digestion digestion stuff sleep stuff um all sorts of things as you described tinnitus as well um so i went uh directly to pt and they tried to help me for about six months. Mm -hmm. They had me doing um, deadlifts and whatnot. They said it was a uh, an SI joint uh, displacement or whatever. Um, and so, you know, you have friends and family that you're talking to and they, they chime in. Oh, you should do this, do this. So I see a chiropractor. I, I see him. He says, yeah, that's exactly right. SI joint uh, displacement here. Let me, let me fix that. Should just be a one and done. Ended up going to him about five or six times. Um, sometimes it would be worse. Sometimes it would be better. Uh, did all sorts of uh, yoga, did all sorts of, um, All sorts of treatments. <laughs> uh, sure. Initially, the PT was pretty casual. It didn't seem like anything serious. And uh, but as it started progressing and getting worse and worse, and as, start, as I started being unable to go to work and do things like uh, do the dishes or mow the lawn or whatever. Uh, I was like, all right, well, I should I should get this more seriously checked out. So I go, I get an MRI, and uh it's it's a nightmare. I got a uh herniated discs, uh degenerated discs, spinal stenosis, whatever. Um and I follow up with my doctor and he says, um he said that the pain will never get better, but you can maybe not make it not get worse. 
And so talk with about, my talk about a nightmare diagnosis, right? Yeah. And I'm and I'm 23, so you don't want to be hearing that. Uh and at the time I, you know, I didn't fully accept it. I was like, okay, well, but with my mindset towards things is okay, well, if that is true, I guess I'll have to be okay with that. But I'll try what I can to make it not true. Um, right. And so, like many people who probably deal with this sort of stuff, I, I'm very obsessive with things. So mm-hmm. if I'm getting better, I'm I'm getting better. And so I'm going to do everything in my power, every single thing I can do um, to make sure that I get better. So I remember writing down uh, a list and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to do nothing but get better. Um, and so I don't know what was on the list. It was like, you know, waking up, walking, doing my PT, um, sure. ensuring a hundred percent. I don't do any of these movements. Um, so maybe a list. You, so you were avoiding a lot of activities that you thought were triggering the more. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was okay. like, okay, I drink enough water. Um, take these supplements, uh, you know, whatever list got, got wacko. Um, but I was like, okay, well, if I'm good, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get better. Um, which of course, you know, did not work. Uh, and we, we tried, um, steroid pills and stuff too. Um, didn't, uh, didn't help. And I had to, I remember being, I was working just at a burger joint at the time and uh, I was kind of the head honcho there. Uh, No big deal or anything, but um, I remember having to ask these like 80 pound girls if they could move these like 20 pound boxes for me. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I I always prided myself on being, you know, the fit one out of my friend group. And I've always... um, I guess been been proud of of being strong and fit. So, um, it was, it was kind of yeah, demoralizing. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. Um, yeah, missed out on countless um, trips with friends, um, countless nights out, uh, whatever you name it. And the the list of of triggering things was just growing and growing. You know, alcohol. Uh, obviously sitting and studying i'm a student so um I, it's just a nightmare going to these um these like two hour science labs where i'm having to stand and like bend over and sure. do test tubes and stuff and so i was just dreading dreading everything dreading everything and meanwhile in the background of all of this um of course for whatever reason i, I can't get uh a good night's nice sleep to save my life um no matter how exhausted I would, I would, I would probably, I would wake up just more tired. Um, sure. And it got to the point where at work, I was, I was just so tired. I was spilling drinks everywhere. Um, my boss was checking in with me. Like, are you okay? Um, are you, are you doing drugs, Alex? I was, no, no, I'm not doing drugs. I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> I just can't sleep. Um, rather I was sleeping. I just didn't seem to be, resting yeah um and digestion problems so the digestion problems happened almost exactly at the same time as as the back problems looking back but i didn't really um didn't really tie them together um until i did uh and made it worse by you know oh so i gotta eat certain things right um that's the problems i'm i don't know causing inflammation or something some way so which has nothing (laughs) to do with it as you now know right so uh you know trying all sorts of crazy diets and you know i was like uh you know i gotta drink more water gotta um hydrate my discs or whatever so um yeah i remember having um i remember having dreams about um where i was just sprinting in a field (laughs) <laughs> and then I realized this just like a puppy or something. Um, 
I was like, oh, I just wanted, I just wanted to sprint in a field so bad. Uh, yeah, every, uh, I, I will say I didn't, I didn't complain too much, um, about it to other people, but I, it, it was absolutely, um, a, an excuse or whatever, when people would ask if I would want to join in on something, I was like, ah, sorry, man, I'm back this my back dad um mm -hmm. can't do that. do that can you help me move this couch no um yeah whatever and it was yeah all my mom's friends and stuff were were asking if i could help them move or mow their lawn or whatever just i say no oh no no they're like well you have back problems you're so young you're so young uh i don't know i don't know what to tell you uh but yeah, then uh, one day, one year ago, I had to go visit my grandpa and he lives about an hour drive away. And so I was, of course, dreading this because an hour driving means an hour sitting and an hour sitting means you're going to make your back much worse and whatnot. So I go there, my back hurts. I'm all I'm all resentful and and um you know sulky and just like not a great attitude and whatnot and my back was genuinely in a lot of pain so fair enough um yeah. I'm like grandpa I, I love seeing you but I I gotta take off and get some rest uh so I I get in my car and I go to like an hour drive back so I'll find something on YouTube to listen to and i search i don't know what i searched but i found about an hour interview with you and some british guy um i forget his name but was it uh, was it martin familiar? if you said the channel name i would remember it oh it was on his channel not mine it was on his channel i don't recall He's a good guy. Good guy. I'll, I'll comment the uh, link if I find it. Uh, but anyway, I listened to it, and over the course of the hour drive, as it as the interview progressed, um, and he was kind of he wasn't fully um, bought into this idea, so he was sort of uh, jousting with you about it. Um, as this interview progressed, it, it started making more and more sense, and everything just melted away. Um, over the course of about 30 minutes. And I remember just like being perfectly comfortable in my, in my seat. And I, and I just thought, huh, okay. And then like magic or whatever, my dad texted me and invited me on a trip, which I know for a fact, if he had texted me 30 minutes prior and invited me, I would have said, no, absolutely not. But, um, I had just listened to the interview and something clicked and I said, I, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to, I have to live life. Um, so he said, yes, yes. I'll go on this trip. Um, we'll go on the trip. It's great. Um, I would say for me, I I'm very, I don't know if it's because I'm open-minded or, um, it had just been so long and I tried everything, but I was, I was able to, um, get better very quickly. Um, I would say like 50% better right away in that interview. And then like a hundred percent better over the course of um, a couple months, maybe. Right. Um, and of course, it, you know, it comes back every once in a while. Um, uh, but now I do landscaping. Uh, I was just digging like 50 holes yesterday to plant these trees, which was all shovel and back work. Um, and whatever and i do uh muay thai kickboxing uh which i don't want to worry anybody people might hear that and say oh there's no way he was bad as bad as i was if he's doing kickboxing I, and um i you know i took i took the re-entry pretty pretty slowly so um but i can absolutely assure you that i, I was i was w wherever you were um but um like you talk about all the time um 
you know, don't go out and run a marathon just because you're not broken. Um, do whatever you would normally do. And so I, for, you know, a 23 year old kid, it's pretty normal to have a landscaping job and do kickboxing and whatever. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, every once in a while it'll, it'll come back and I'll, and it, I, I'm actually very grateful when it comes back because it, 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 it gives me a, a cue on my mindset and I'm like, Oh, what, what's going on here? Uh, why am I, uh, why am I out of it? Um, so, um, yeah. And were, then were you able to connect anytime it comes back, were you able to connect it and go, okay, I got this, this and that going on in my life, you know? So that's, that's likely why it's there. Or do you, uh, They'll go back Absolutely. to the physical. Did I lift something too heavy landscaping? Hopefully you're more on the mindset wise. Well, I, I will find myself thinking the latter. Um, and then, you know, I'll come back to reality and think, no, no, there's no way it was that. Cause I'm not broken. Um, and that meditation, just I'm not broken was, was, was one of my most frequent sort of root, like things I would ruminate on to, uh, to, to really help things. Um, and, and just recently, um, I sort of kind of fully understood how that mindset applies to everything else. Um, and I've been able to, uh, fix my sleep and stuff. Cause that, that followed it's, it's, it's sort of easy for some reason for the, 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 the very physical things like, like back pain, um, for me anyway, um, because, uh, you can point to it and you can kind of do something about it. But for, for something like um, kind of as elusive as sleep, it's a little bit. Well, it's not trickier, but it seems trickier. Um, and it but it sort of clicked how I need to approach it. And I, I just realized, like, why am I going to bed if I'm not tired? And so it's because I have this um, obsessive need because of all this information i've heard you got to go to bed at this time to get this many hours so i'd find myself you know not being tired but kind of compulsively okay i gotta get in bed gotta go to bed but it's like no just go to bed when you're tired and then wake up in the morning because mornings are beautiful and it's good to get a lot of stuff done and then if you just you know be normal it'll it'll fall into place it always falls into place um so now I just go to bed when I'm tired and I get tired much earlier. So um, I'm not as, uh, it's like, uh, like, like you say, it's, are you creating something that your subconscious is afraid of? And it's like, I was running from this, this beast that was, um, bad sleep because i've heard all these horrible things about bad sleep you know cause dementia or whatever um and it's like trying to sleep in the same room as like a like like a ra like a radioactive cube or something it's like you're not going to get very good sleep if there's this this horrible thing in the room that you're that you're running from so it's just like now there's like Wait, I don't know. i'm not tired i'll just stay up Though I am tired, then I'll go to bed. Yeah. So anyway, that I I was able to connect the same sort of obsession based actions to uh, to other things. Yeah. So I just want to um, make a statement about insomnia and this thing you heard that it causes dementia. For anybody watching this, don't jump to that. Please do not jump to that. I think there's a whole bunch of other stuff that causes dementia. Sleep is probably the least likely one to do that. If you are dreadfully tired after, you know, maybe getting an hour of sleep, you may have a little brain fog in the morning because you're just not able to be focused because you're so exhausted. That is not dementia. That is just being exhausted. So I just wanted to clarify that because I don't buy into that belief system that says insomnia means dementia BS. That's a connection somebody made. That's the fear, you know, monikers out there on the Internet. Oh, this happened to me. This happened to me. And those are what I call bad neighborhoods. So for anybody watching this, please don't listen to that and get scared if you're not, in, you know, experiencing the best sleep. Um, and the analogy that kind of jumped out to me is, you know, you go to bed when you're tired. Uh, I always say 
allow yourself to fall asleep. Don't try to fall asleep. And the analogy that kind of jumped out to me is like trying to chase a cat. Mm, Chasing yeah. cat, the farther they go. If you're trying to chase sleep, the farther away it's going to go. Yes. Primarily because if you're stressing out about the lack of sleep, you're going to bed with adrenaline, cortisol, stress hormones that basically say to your brain, something bad's happening, danger. And what's your brain going to do? It's going to keep you awake to keep you safe because there's something dangerous going on. So allow yourself to fall asleep, not try to fall asleep. Uh, and do your best to go to sleep with the least amount of fear as to what the night's going to bring. Mm. There's a lot of people be like, yeah, I have no problem falling asleep, but I'll wake up at two in the morning and I'm up for hours. I'm like, okay, what's your response when you wake up at 2 a.m.? Is it, oh no, I'm awake again. Ah, this is awful. Stress, stress, stress. And then if you're pull, pulling up your phone and you're looking at that blue light, you know, mm. the, you know, the biology from the screen says, hey, body, it's 12 o'clock noon, get up. So if your habits are to get stressed out about waking up in the middle of the night, looking at your phone and wondering why you can't fall back asleep for a few hours, you just scared yourself and told yourself it's 12 o'clock noon. <laughs> so uh, there's some things we can do that are, are better than others. So if you do wake up at two in the morning, you look at the clock and go, oh, good. I've got more time to sleep. Let me roll over and relax, right? As opposed to getting all worked up over it. So just to touch on the uh, sleep a little bit. Yeah. Um, digestion, has that resolved itself as well? Yes. Um, you said in that... Uh interview with the british guy on the first initial one i listened to like mm -hmm. that you have trouble with with like bread and dairy but you know you eat a slice of pizza bread and dairy and you know maybe you feel a little something but it, it, it goes away and just something about the way you said it really clicked and so i now i mean i've always been very uh, obsessive about my diet and mm -hmm. gotta eat Got to eat perfect, got to eat perfect. Um, but now, I, you know, I just eat whatever I want to within within reason. Um, sure. and usually I want to eat pretty good things. So um, uh, I don't uh, I don't avoid anything now. So which I'm just realizing, which is great. Yeah. It's great. Makes uh makes family events and whatnot much easier. Yeah, you don't have to be the one saying, well, I can eat those two things, but the rest of the table I can't touch. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to your point, Alex, you know, the, uh, the bread and the pizza, I know that if I'm eating the gluten or pizza in particular, cause dairy and the gluten together, um, I just get congested. I don't get sick. I just get congested and it lasts for several hours and then it eventually goes away. And so, um, you know, I never allowed it to develop into, you know, huge fear for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I can literally eat pretty much whatever I want. And I know that if I eat like crap and I gorge myself on bad foods, I'm going to feel like crap for six hours or maybe 12 hours. That doesn't mean I'm sick. It doesn't mean I'm allergic to those things. It just means that our body likes more healthy options than it does, you know, the junk food that comes out of a machine. So um, anything else you want to share here? Because you know, you basically went from a couple of years of practically bedridden, not being able to work. I assume did that interrupt your studies as well? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. To now, do you have any physical limitations? I mean, obviously not if you're, you know, doing landscaping and digging holes to plant trees. That's fairly physical labor. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, every once in a while, like even um, I've had a really physically hard week. And so I'm feeling like everything's a little tight. Some of the old pains are back a little bit, but I know it's not, it's not real or permanent. It's just, um, you know, just sore from working. So um, it'll go away probably tomorrow and um, right. I'll be back. Um, and yeah. It's good. Well, I was going to say the key for any time, any symptoms come back is to call it out for exactly what it is. I'm not broken. This is just the brain creating symptoms based on, work stress, family stress, money stress, you know, relationship stress, whatever it may be, uh, or even some physical labor. Because with, with a brain that's been hypersensitive to sensations for a while, it's very possible we get normal sensations from exercise. So after doing, digging all those holes, 
you had normal muscle fatigue, muscle soreness from digging holes because that's not a daily activity for you. And somebody who's had a, a tendency towards TMS, what I call perceived danger pain, that brain is always looking out for danger. So a day or two after you dug some holes, your brain's interpreting this normal muscle fatigue and soreness as, uh-oh, what happened? Tight, tighten up, maybe a little bit of pain. And when you look at pain as a protector, basically what it's doing is it's saying, Alex, don't dig any more holes today. Here's some discomfort to make sure you don't. It, it doesn't have that logic and reason. It's just a, a purely subconscious you know, safety mechanism. Um, but I use that logical language to kind of express what I believe the brain is doing in those cases. So um, yeah, if you're tight or tense or feeling some discomfort after a particularly heavy physical day, and it's a delayed reaction, you didn't hurt while digging the holes, but you hurt a day or two later, oftentimes I think it's the brain just overreacting to normal muscle soreness or fatigue. So hopefully that'll allow you to go, oh, yeah, not worried. And uh sounds like you're in a really good place. So even though, and for anybody listening, if anybody's going, yeah, but he's not cured because he still gets discomfort. Let's be clear. He's cured the chronic pain. We will still experience human pain from time to time. Mm -hmm. Stressful times, working too much physically, labor, whatever. We will still have symptoms, but it's not becoming chronic again. So that is my opinion. That is exactly what a cure from TMS looks like. You are recovered from the fear and the amount of attention you give it. Mm -hmm. You don't feed any symptoms with fear and attention. What happens? They go away very quickly. Right. So you're, you're proof of that concept. So for anybody watching, don't don't judge and say, well, he's not healed if he still gets pain once <laughs> a while. Right? Because... For anybody who expects that once they get recovered from TMS, they will never have any uncomfortable right. sensations again, you're going to be disappointed. Um, and I have had, you know, probably in the past 13 years, four or five instances of discomfort, some pain, mm -hmm. lower back pain, sciatica. But I called it out for exactly what it was. I knew what was going on. I was able to trace it back to some life events and things going on. Gave it zero fear, zero attention. And in all of these four or five cases, it was gone in a week. So I have recovered from chronic pain completely. Mm -hmm. But I'm human. And once in a while, things go a little sideways in life. And the brain just reacts with a little tightness, discomfort. And if you react to that with fear and, oh, no, here we go again, then it can get worse and worse, which is interesting because you said it was a little tweak that progressed to bedridden. Mm -hmm. So clearly it wasn't an injury right. because injuries happen instantly and they right. show a lot more instantly than a, a tweak. But it sounds like over the first several weeks or months of this, you know, onset of pain, the fear level, the attention that was given to it, the need to fix it, the desire to go to, you know, PT, chiropractic, whatever you were doing, and as the fear grew, so did your pain, and so did your disability. Mm -hmm. And once you, once you got through that interview, a dose of, wow, holy crap, I'm, I'm actually okay. What happened to your fear level during that interview? Came way down. Like you said, you have 50% reduction through accurate knowledge and a reduction in fear. And it took a couple of months for you to really allow that to be integrated into who you were and how you saw and experienced yourself and your body. Um, but that's fantastic, man. Those are really uh, great examples of how this stuff works. The Absolutely. <clears throat> and yeah. one of the, one of the most crucial parts was definitely stopping PT, which, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you initially hear that it's, it's unfathomable. It's uh, you're thinking no way, but yeah, it's all about the messages you're sending yourself and so that was one of the biggest leaps in in uh in uh reduction in pain definitely was stopping that yeah because if you're going to the pt they're going to be telling you what's wrong with your body and mm -hmm. your brain is paying attention to everything they do and say 
and you walk out of there going, I got a body problem. See, we've been mm-hmm. working on the body for the past 45 minutes or an hour. And so stopping that is a really good idea. Dr. Sarno, one of his first daily reminders was stop all physical treatments. Mm-hmm. Why? Confuses the brain. Mm-hmm. You know, convinces the brain that there's a body problem. And what we're trying to do in this entire process is teach the brain that, no, my body's okay. I'm a young, fit, healthy 23-year-old. Yeah. It's so interesting because ah, there my my PT was always like, oh man, you you should be okay, but maybe you need surgery. And you just remember that it's you fear, know, it's fear, not fear. it's not malevolence, but it's just it's just uh ignorance on their part. And they don't, you know, if people knew better then then they then they would know better, which is well, doctors, PTs, massage therapists, acupuncturists, chiropractors, they're all operating on the framework of which they were taught through their schooling Mm -hmm. and they are the mechanics of the human body. And there's no way you can walk in and out of a chiropractic office without them, you know, pointing at physical body because that's what they do. Um, And unfortunately they're not taught any of this mind body stuff. They're not taught the role of the brain. Um, My interpretation is symptoms are the result of the brain perceiving some danger. And the symptoms are simply a warning signal to say, Hey, pay attention. Something's going on here. And it's up to us to basically say, hey, brain, shh, no, I'm actually okay. Mm-hmm. I'm really okay. And when the brain gets that message, like it did in your case, 50% reduction just through accurate knowledge, and then through ingraining that into who you are, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of it. And so now you're back to living life, living large, so to speak. Absolutely. Yes. It, uh the the process of getting back into it i want to highlight that i i in the midst of it i absolutely had accepted that i would never get better and i just was okay with that this is my life this is my life now i'll just be like uh kind of a, a walking uh stephen hawking or something yeah um, so i just want to point out you said accepted it i yes. talk about acceptance but that is different than resignation. You resigned yourself to be in the yes. guy with the back pain. Yes. And I talk about accepting where you are in the moment, but that's not resignation that it's forever. So I, I'm yeah. a stickler for that's- language. So I just wanted to say you accepted and resigned yourself to the fact that you were going to be the back pain guy forever at 10 yes. years old. Good clarification. Yes, absolutely. But it, it, to the degree to which... I had resigned myself was um, I mean, I'm sure anyone listening probably understands, but I, yeah, I had already pictured the next um, 80 years of my life. And uh, I was like, all right, how is, how's my marriage going to work? You know, how, what am, what am I going to do for work? Okay. Well, I could probably do this, 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 and this. Um, all right. Well, you know, just figuring out all the little details. Um, but yeah, no, you can get better easily. It's easy. You were sitting there watching a movie called Alex's Horrible Future. Yes. Yes. And we um, all do it. I did it for a lot of years. And most everybody I'm working with does that all the time. They're watching the horror movie of my life and they're the starring role. And we got to rewrite that script is essentially what we're doing. We're saying, no, that doesn't have to be the case. And yeah. with accurate knowledge, the focus on what we want and not what we don't want. Calm reassurance, the ability to just be super clear with ourself. That level of clarity is so important. Um, everybody can get there. I truly believe it. And a few days ago, I did a video that says, if one person can get better, we all can. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe that with my heart. Absolutely. Do, do you find a lot of work needs to be done in the area of finding should, should statements? Um sort of people Clever. people latching on to to shoulds like i should do this um that was that was one of the things that i found was keeping me from enjoying life was kind of this idea of should rather than um want yes yes um and I'm so grateful because it's just it's just allowed me to appreciate 
life so much more and it's just like okay well what what do i, what do I want to do like i don't now that i've escaped this realm of of should of um you know statistics and data and uh whatnot it's like well what do i want to do well, i want to i want to go play volleyball let's do that and, but that applies to, to so much more in terms of a healthy spirit and a healthy um yeah so what they say, uh, if you say I should do this, should, 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 they they call that shooting all over yourself. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. I should do this, I should not do this. And you had a whole list of things you should not do, which were movements and body positions and, you know, foods and alcohol and everything else. That you, I shouldn't do that, shouldn't do it, shouldn't do it, which just created more and more fear, right? And then and I, you, had your, you had your whole list of shoulds, which were, your 16 point checklist for your day to say, I need to do this every day in order to not get worse. So you had shoulds on and should nots. And at the end of the day, want is a much better approach. What would I like to eat? What do I want to eat as opposed to right. what I should eat? Now, ideally we can all get to a place where we actually want to eat the foods that make us feel better. Not that we yeah. should do it, but because we actually want to, because I want to take care of this thing called the human body. I only got right. one of them, so I better take care of it type of approach. Um, so what were you going to say? Sorry, I jumped well, in. I'm a, I'm a fiend for ice cream. I, 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 I eat about two to three ice cream sandwiches a day. So that's yeah. uh, that's what I want. But I was going to say, um, once my back got better, I got into weightlifting again, um, as I like to do. Uh, and I hurt my shoulder, um, I thought. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I went on over to PT, and the first thing they did was give me a list of four things that I shouldn't do. Don't raise it this way. Don't raise it this way. Don't raise it that way. And as soon as I got that list, I thought, uh, Slippery right, slope. I'll do this for two or three weeks. And then if it's still there, I'm throwing this in the garbage, which... Um, is what I did. So I guess it did transfer to my shoulder for a bit. And then, uh, um, because it was, it, um, hurt for the longest time about six months or so, but I, you know, nothing was broken in there. So, uh, yeah, it's called know. a symptom imperative. My interpretation of what that means is that you did an exceptionally good job of teaching your back or teaching your brain that your back was okay. But you still had a brain that was always looking out for danger. So now that you started doing some weights, your your brain was like, uh-oh, what's he doing? It's going to hurt his shoulder. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. what's that sensation in his shoulder? Which may have been normal muscle fatigue or muscle soreness. And the brain latches onto it because it's been hypervigilant for over two years. And it just kind of says, uh-oh, what's going on there? And then you fall into the same trap which is, it must be physical. I'm going to do physical therapy and I'm going to do these exercises and not do these movements. And before you know it, it's like, it's the same exact problem, but just in a different body part. But it's not that the body part was the issue. It was the brain perceiving danger, starting a symptom, and then the fear caused it to magnify and stick around. So the key is any new symptom, give yourself the grace to say, probably just TMS because I don't remember hurting anything in the gym in the moment. Mm -hmm. Again, if you injure yourself, you know, instantly. Right. And if it's like coming out of nowhere, and I've heard that phrase, Oh, I had this pain come out of nowhere. It's a really strong indicator of mind, body, TMS, perceived danger, creating the symptoms. So, yes. Yes. Since then I've, I've been able to spread the gospel to a, a few good friends. Um, awesome. who, uh, had some uh had some similar problems um but yeah i suspect that um this approach is the cure for much more than we think it is uh I but that every day <laughs> yeah i suspect it's it, it's it's probably everything but um most, most they, not everything right. but most everything yeah so uh i i yeah i am beyond grateful thank you for um well giving me my life back but also you know giving my mom a son again and whatever um thank you very much yeah thrilled for you man no and, and i really appreciate the way you explained everything um 
yeah, you did a really good job in, in kind of hitting the points for your journey. And uh, I think it'll be very helpful for anybody listening. So unless you've got anything else, we'll wrap this one up. I'm all good. I'm all good. All right. You did a great job. I appreciate it. You're going to inspire a lot of people. So thank you, Alex. Take care. Thank you.